Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you my best tips and tools to inspire you to create beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I'm switching it up a little bit and I am bringing you my top 20 spring decor DIYs based on viewer response and my personal favorites from the past year or two. So with all that being said, let's get crafting. For today's first DIY, we're gonna make these stacked wood boxes. I'm using three of these boxes with lids from Dollar Tree, some giant craft sticks from Walmart, and some super glue wood glue. So these boxes are really cute, but I wanted to cover up the laser cut images. So I'm taking one of these giant craft sticks from Walmart and just marking off where I need to cut it so that it would fit perfectly inside the lid. And I'm just gonna trim that with some good scissors. I will need three of these pieces for each of my lids, making a total of nine pieces that I will need for these three boxes. So I'm gonna cut all those pieces. Then once I have them cut, I'm gonna use some wood glue to glue them inside the lids. Once those are dry, I'm gonna take my antique wax and I am going to use my paintbrush to brush it all over the inside and outsides of the bottom boxes, except for one side that we will be gluing to uh, put our project together. We're also gonna do the lids. So then you can see once they're done, I'm gonna put glue on the bottom edge here of the lid and also on this one unpainted back side of the box and I'm gonna glue it together kind of like a chair, centering the box inside the lid, and we're gonna do this to all three of our boxes. Then once that glue is dry, we're going to put a line of wood glue here on the top of the lid, and you can see we're gonna glue the three pieces together there at the lid edge. So I've got these two, and then I'm gonna put some more glue on the third one and stack them up together. We're gonna set that aside and let that dry until that wood glue is completely dry. Now you could make this as tall as you want. You could make two columns of this next to each other, but just to show you a simple way to decorate with these, I'm going to take some of these potted greeneries or you can find something similar from Dollar Tree and the middle one and the bottom one, I'm just gonna tuck them inside here. Then the top one, it was looking a little sad. It needed a little work. So I took the burlap off and I'm actually going to paint a little terracotta pot to put this inside. And once that paint is dry, we'll put a little bit of glue on that foam, add a little bit of moss, and then we'll stick the greenery back into the pot. And here's our finished stacked shelf. I love how simple this is, and you can definitely paint this and decorate it with whatever color scheme you choose. For DIY number two, we're gonna take a wood cutting board and a wood crate to make a little standing flower box. This cutting board was from a thrift store, but you can find something similar at Hobby Lobby or Dollar Tree. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to paint the cutting board with Waverly chalk paint in the dark gray color called Elephant. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my little wood crate. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to use a chippy brush to apply some white Waverly chalk paint with some really heavy brush strokes. I know this isn't officially dry brushing, but that's what I call dry brushing, where you get a little bit of it off. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the crate as well. Then
Then we'll use our little hand sander to kind of blend in that paint and come back in and make sure we have painted the edges of our cutting board as well as the top edges of our crate. Next, applying some wood glue to these back three slats of our crate. We're going to then attach it to the bottom portion of the cutting board. We wanna make sure it's flush and lined up so that this can stand on its own. I chose to use one of these Magnolia stencils to add the word home to the back of our little cutting board here. If you've never seen these before, there is a link in my link tree for my Magnolia website. We don't, I believe, carry this exact stencil anymore, but we do have plenty that say the word home, or you could always use the letter stickers from Dollar Tree or Hobby Lobby. So I'm just going to position my stencil and then use a little bit of black chalk paste to apply this word to my cutting board. Then comes the peel and reveal to see that nicely stenciled word. And I will spray that with a clear matte spray once it is dry. I decided to add a small burlap bow to the top of the cutting board. So I'm just looping a piece of burlap ribbon, tying it in the center with a piece of jute twine, and then we'll be able to just glue this to the top of our cutting board. And I'm also gonna add a small black button as well. As a final farmhouse touch to the box, I'm gonna take this black and white gingham ribbon and I'm going to run a bead of hot glue around this top slat of our crate and we're going to just wrap this all the way around. Then all that's left to do is add whatever greenery or flowers or candy or chocolates, whatever you'd like to add to this cute little box. DIY number three has always been one of my favorites. We're gonna use a butter dish from Dollar Tree as well as three salt shakers to make a cute little mini vase set. Now, if they don't have this clear butter dish, they probably have the white one. I've used that one as well. But first, we're gonna come to our salt shakers. Your design at your store might look a little different, but I'm just using three. And before I paint them, I'm going to give them a layer of Mod Podge. I just find that this helps the paint to adhere better to the glass surface. So paint all three and let them dry. Then you can go ahead and put a coat of whatever color paint you would like. Here, obviously, I am using Waverly White. Once the paint is dry, I am gonna take some thin jute twine and using hot glue where I need it, I'm gonna wrap it around the top part of each of my three salt shakers where the lid would screw on. This gives a nice farmhouse look to these mini vases. Now,
Now coming to the butter dish, I had spray painted this, but I didn't like how it looked shiny in some places. So I did decide to go over the outside of the top of the butter dish and the this side of the base with black chalk paint. And then once those are dry, we're going to glue the lid part, this is actually the lid of the butter dish, upside down onto the base to make like a little, I don't know, what would you call this? A little tray to put the mini vases in. Next, taking this burlap ribbon, I'm gonna cut it in half so that it's a little skinnier and I'm going to add this around the outside of our butter dish. Then to add even more to our farmhouse look, I'm gonna take that same black and white gingham ribbon and I'm gonna glue that around right in the center of the burlap ribbon. Then the last step is just to put your little mini vases in your tray and add the florals or greenery of your choice. For DIY number four, we're gonna make a really fun lantern using tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and a little bit of this nautical rope, as well as a couple pieces of five gallon paint stick. Now here is a rectangle I'm showing you that uses six tumbling tower blocks. We're actually going to need three of these rectangles for each side of our lantern. So we will need a total of 12 of these rectangles. So the first thing I'm going to do is take 48 blocks and I'm gonna glue them end to end like this into 24 pairs. So we're gonna do that first. You can see I'm using that level ruler to make sure I get them nice and straight. So 24 pairs of those, then once those are dry, I do like to sand them a little bit to try to get out any extra wood glue that may have seeped through. Then taking those 24 pairs, we're now going to make our 12 rectangles. So we're just gluing two of the long sticks to the side of a single tumbling tower block and then completing the rectangle with another single tumbling tower block. Again, we're gonna make 12 of these rectangles for this lantern. And here are our 12 rectangles. Now this is how we're gonna glue them together using two more single tumbling tower blocks. You can see I'm gonna put this single tumbling tower block right in the center of that left block that's on the top of this rectangle and then another one right in the center of the right block. I'm gonna do this first, let those dry, and then we're gonna glue this other rectangle on top of that, kind of like we're making the letter I, a really fat capital I. I'm gonna do that and I'm using these five gallon sticks just to make sure they're nice and straight from one rectangle to the next. Once those bottom pieces are dry, we will then glue two more single blocks and the top rectangle. So we're gonna do this to all four pieces. Now that our four sides are dry, we're going to apply wood glue to the three rectangles on one, and then we're going to glue the next one exactly to it at a right angle. So we're gonna continue doing this as these two pieces dry. We will then turn it and glue the next piece onto the side of that one that's laying flat. And then we'll also attach our fourth piece. It's important to take your time with this. Make sure each piece is sufficiently dry and strong before you try to move your lantern. So here we have to put glue on the piece that's on the bottom now and also on the top edge of this side piece so we can complete 
our square for our lantern. Now while that's drying, I did measure how long or the length of the base of the lantern is and I'm gonna cut these three pieces of five gallon paint stick just long enough. They're not going to cover completely. We'll have a little bit of space, but that's okay. I kind of like that look. And we're just gonna glue these pieces across the bottom with wood glue and then let them dry. This will be the base of our lantern. So I'm choosing to use one of these battery powered pillar candles and some of these little greenery wreaths that were originally, I believe, from Target. I do need to loosen them up a little bit so I can make sure that they fit around the base of my candle. And I'm just going to put all three of them on the candle to make it easy to put our decorations in and out of our lantern. And here you can see our lantern with the candle and greenery inside. I'll also mention I chose to keep my lantern unfinished. Of course, you could paint your blocks or stain them. I would suggest you do it before you start gluing them together so that you don't have any glue showing. Next, for the handle, I'm taking three lengths of nautical rope. You can see I'm gluing them all together there and then taping them down. I decided I wanted to loosely braid the pieces of nautical rope to make a nice strong handle for this lantern. Once I got my braid as long as I wanted it, I'm also applying some hot glue to keep the braid from unraveling. I decided also then to use some zip ties on either end of my braid so that I could make sure it stayed nice and strong and it'll also help me to be able to glue it to the inside of the lantern. So applying the zip ties, trimming the ends, putting a little hot glue, and then I decided to go corner to corner diagonally with my handle just so that the nautical rope had both sides of the corner to kind of glue itself to. So putting hot glue there and also on the rope handle, we're just pressing it into the corner. And I absolutely love this lantern. I think it'd be really fun to make one a little bit shorter and a little bit taller for a set of three. For DIY number five, we're gonna make this round hello sign using a round wood sign from Walmart, this MDF hello from Dollar Tree, and a stencil from Magnolia. Now I'm going to turn this sideways because what I wanna do on this black surface is I wanna use this mini plaid stencil and I want to make the two sides or, yeah, it'll be the sides. Right now they look like top and bottom of this sign with a black and white plaid pattern. So I'm lining up my stencil and I'm gonna use some white chalk paste to make a plaid pattern here on most of this side of the circle. This is a repeating pattern. So once I finish what I can cover with the stencil right here and I let that chalk paste dry, I will put my stencil down again to finish the pattern on this side and then I'll also do it on the other side. Look at that, isn't that amazing? I just love that. While that's drying, I'm gonna take this MDF Hello from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna paint everything with Maze. It's a beautiful yellow from Waverly Chalk Paint. I'm just not going to paint the very back. Then I decided to make a double loop bow with this burlap and gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. The top loop is gonna be a little bit smaller than the bottom one. And then because this is not wired ribbon, I'm going to use a zip tie to pull this ribbon together, kind of doing it slowly to make sure that my ribbon is kind of folding in on itself the way I want it to, making sure it's as even as possible on both sides. Well, 
Once our bow is made, I'm gonna take some wood glue and I'm going to glue down the MDF Hello. I'm also going to use a mixture with hot glue so that I have the immediate grab of the hot glue, but then the extra strength with the wood glue. I love this yellow on the black and white gingham. It's so, so pretty. And then I was trying to figure out how the best way to add this boxwood greenery would be. I do end up cutting each of the bunches off and bending them around the back and stapling them into the back. I should have taken a picture of that. But those are all stapled onto the back of the wood round. And then I'm going to cover up the jute twine or the the zip tie on the bow with some black and white gingham ribbon just to cover that up and then we'll be able to put our bow onto our sign. And here's our finished sign. I think it's so bright and cheerful for spring and summer. For DIY number six, we're gonna make a really cute Love Grows floral hanger using this smaller wood round sign, some of these mini glass containers from Dollar Tree, as well as a magnolia stencil. Now this sign I believe originally was from Target. It looks like it's four separate pieces. It is MDF, although it has this nice wood grain look on the front. So I am going to spritz a little water on it and just brush on some antique wax. Then we will wipe off the excess, but I just wanted to darken up this wood grain a little bit for this project. So just wipe off the excess with a paper towel and then we're going to let that dry. We'll also come in and darken up the edges so it does actually look like wood and not MDF. Next, I'm gonna use the pieces of this little stencil set. This is actually made to go on a book stack or on books. I'm gonna use the words love grows here, but you could also use lives instead of grows. And I'm lining up the bottom of the stencil. I don't know if you can see on the line of the shiplap look, like right there at the break in the pieces of wood. So love grows here. And then we're gonna stencil this on with just a little bit of white chalk paste. I think that looks so good with the white on the brown. Now, I had in my stash these little fence pieces, but you could easily make one of these with some small craft sticks. I'm painting that white. And then taking three of these mini glass containers from Dollar Tree, I'm first going to just tack them down with a little bit of hot glue, one right in the middle, and then one on either of the two ends. And we are going to secure these more, so don't worry. But for right now, I'm just tacking them down with the hot glue. We're gonna turn these into little vases, kind of like the salt shakers. Now see what I'm doing here with the twine? I secured it on the end, and then I'm weaving it in and out around the glass vials and around the pieces of the fence. I'm gonna go back and forth about four times until I think it's nice and secure. Then we will attach it with some glue on the back and then do the same thing to the bottoms of our vials. We're gonna go back and forth that way these glass vials are gonna be very secure and we don't have to worry about them falling off. And here's what it looks like with the jute on the bottom as well, and it's secured on the back. Now I'm gonna take my heavy duty hot glue and I'm gonna put a line of hot glue on the back of each of these posts on the fence and we're gonna glue this to our wood round. Then once that's in place, you can add whatever faux florals you'd like, or you could even put a little bit of water in here and add some cuttings of actual flowers if you'd like. Thank you. 
For DIY number seven, we're gonna make what I'm calling frame trays. I'm using four of these signs from Dollar Tree. If they don't have these, they always have something similar. And I'm just removing the decoration from it and popping the back out from the frame. So for each, we're gonna make two of these trays. For each one, we need one empty tray and one that we're gonna put the backing back in. So for all four of these, I'm just giving them a quick coat of some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm gonna sand the edges a little bit to distress it, and then I am going to seal that either with Mod Podge or a clear matte spray. So here's what we have from the four frames that we took apart from our signs. Then I'm gonna use this really pretty decorative contact paper from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to cover two of the sign backs. We don't need the other two for this project. We're just going to use two of them. So I'm gonna get this smoothed on nicely and then trim away the excess. Next, we're gonna take those two backings that we just covered and we're gonna glue them into two of the frames. The other two frames we're going to leave open. Next, I'm gonna take eight tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to paint them with our black Waverly chalk paint. We are gonna use these as dividers between the base of our tray and this top frame. So here I'm taking four of the blocks and I'm gluing them into the corners of the open frame. Next for the feet on our trays, I decided to use some of these feet that I, or not feet, lids that I have left over from the salt shakers I've been using for vases. We're gonna glue these on. I did spray paint them black, but you could always leave them silver as well. And I wanted to repurpose these as feet for this tray. Now that those four tumbling tower blocks are dry, I'm gonna put some more glue on the top of them and we're going to glue the other end of the block to the frame that has the back in it. I love the look of this and it looks so elegant and farmhouse at the same time. And it just gives us a fun little tray that we can either put these spray painted cans in with some pebbles and florals, or we can add something else in for decor that I'll show you in just a minute. So like I said, I took some repurposed cans and just added some flowers and those are really cute in this frame tray. Or you could put some greenery and a little candle. This just happens to be a battery powered one, but you could use a real candle as well. I love these. These were one of my favorites that I had kind of forgotten about until I put this compilation video together. And I actually wanna make some more of these. For DIY number eight, we're gonna make some bamboo ring hanging planters. We're gonna use two sets of these bamboo rings from Dollar Tree, as well as a chunky circle, some jute twine, and a couple of beads. Now, we're gonna make a base to put a pot on. So this is for our two smaller rings. We're gonna use two of these wood circles from Walmart. I'm gluing them together to make them thicker. And then for my larger rings, I'm gonna use this chunky wood circle that comes with jute twine in it, but we removed that and we're gonna fill in that hole with some wood filler. This is going to be the base for the pot in our larger hanging planter. So fill in with the wood filler and then sand that. Now I'm gonna use antique wax for all four of the bamboo rings as well as our two circle platforms. So we're just going to brush all that antique wax on and then wipe off the excess. Now, 
Now, fitting one of the larger rings inside the other large ring, I'm going to glue them together so that they are crisscross here, hopefully as perfectly centered as possible to give us 90 degree angles there at the top and we can just add extra glue as needed. So getting those in, and then we're gonna do the same thing with the two smaller rings, fitting them inside each other. Now I decided to take apart some of the white cotton nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm taking all the strings apart and I'm going to make some tassels for the bottom of my hangers here. So I'm just getting all the strings the size I want and I'm looping them around crisscross the bottom of our sphere. And then I'm gonna take one more piece of the yarn and I'm gonna tie it in a knot so that it is a tassel that will hang from the bottom of our planter. It's important that you put this on before you try to glue in your base, otherwise it'll be really hard to work around. Now once you have it the length you want, go ahead and trim it. Here I'm gonna do the same thing with our smaller bamboo rings. Next here, taking the Walmart circles, I'm placing them in the bottom of our two smaller rings and I'm kind of marking where I need to put glue so that I can glue this in as flat as possible. Now I'm putting glue here on the ring that is on the inside and that is where this circle is going to touch. It's not quite going to lay flat on the outer ring because that inner ring is in the middle but there's a small enough gap that I can just put some hot glue in there to secure it there as well. You can even flip it over if you want. This is the bigger chunky circle with the bigger rings and you can see where you need to put the glue. Mark it off with a pencil there just like we did with the smaller one and just add glue until it is secure. Now I have found these two different sizes of pots from Dollar Tree. This one is a three and a half inch, you get two. And this is about a two and a half inch, you get three of them. I'm choosing to use two of the smallest ones and I'm going to paint them with white Waverly chalk paint. And then we will get them ready to set on our little hanging planters here. I'm also gonna paint two of these really large wood beads that I have with the white chalk paint as well. Now, to hang our planters, I'm gonna use a length of jute twine. This is pretty strong jute twine. I don't want this breaking and falling. And I'm gonna loop it around against diagonally like we did with the tassel to hang our uh, hanger shelf here, whatever we wanna call it. Putting the ends together, I'm gonna to put a little bit of scotch tape on the end so that we can put a few beads just as another decorative touch on the top of each of these plant hangers. So I'm gonna start with an unfinished wood bead, then the white one that we painted, and then another unfinished bead. And I'm gonna do this on both of our hangers. Now that our pots are dry, I'm gonna press a little bit of floral foam in there, and then we're going to glue a little bit of moss on top of that to hide that floral foam. And then I'm choosing to just use a couple of the faux succulents from Dollar Tree. You can add whatever type of plant you want. You could even use these to hang an actual real plant. But I love these. I love how farmhouse yet kind of modern they are. I love the tassel made out of the cotton rope as well. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome and I'm so glad that you found me. I really hope you enjoy what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. 
Also, just a quick reminder to everyone, tap that bell, make sure your notifications are set to all, so YouTube should let you know when I upload a new video or go live here on my channel. For DIY number nine, we're gonna make a hoop sign with burlap flowers using a large embroidery hoop, a magnolia stencil, some burlap ribbon and rope, and some canvas cloth. Now, this is just basic canvas cloth I found at Walmart. It's very easy to rip into the shape you want. Just do a little snip. And then I love those frayed edges. I wanted to make sure it was gonna be the right height to fit my stencil. Now I love this stencil. I'm just going to use the words be still and then the reference from Psalms. We're gonna use this Magnolia stencil with some of our permanent ink since we are stenciling on fabric. Once I get it in place and press down nicely, no air bubbles, I'll take just a small amount of my permanent ink in black and stencil these words onto this canvas fabric. And I'm always so amazed at how awesome the words look from these stencils. So we're going to let that dry completely. And then taking apart our large embroidery hoop, we're going to place the strip of fabric over the inside hoop and then place the outside hoop over it, squeezing it in between, pulling it tight until we have it how we want it, and then tightening our hoop at the screw at the top. Then I'm going to trim very closely any excess of the fabric that is hanging out there at the back. Now I should have done this before I put the fabric in, but I decided to paint my hoops black. So I'm just gonna have to take a little bit of careful time with that. Now I'm gonna make a few burlap pulled string flowers. These are awesome. My friend Heidi Scott taught me how to make these. I'm just gonna cut a length of this six inch burlap ribbon. I think this is about 14 inches. I'm not sure, but we're gonna cut three of each color. And then I'm gonna show you how easy it is to make these awesome flowers looking just like this. You can put a button or a wood plug in the center. From your piece here, you can see I'm removing a few of the strands on the short sides. And then what we're gonna do is you're gonna pull out the long horizontal pieces from the middle until you have just a couple left at the top edge and a couple left at the bottom. We're gonna have it be just vertical pieces. We're taking all these long horizontal pieces out but hold on to them, don't throw them away. You can make some awesome tassels out of those pieces. So here's what it looks like when you have all those horizontal pieces out. We're gonna take a glue gun. This is my Sure Shot, Sure Bonder Cool Shot so it doesn't get super hot. And we're basically now folding this piece in half. We're gonna glue the two um, edges together and you're gonna start to see those loops are gonna kind of fold sideways and look like petals of a flower. So we're gonna keep folding this and gluing it until we get to the very end, and then snip off any excess, and you can see how this is starting to look like a flower. Now we're gonna put some glue on that same edge, and we're gonna start rolling this up until we get all the way to the end, and then we're gonna have our flower. So here's what it looks like when it's all the way rolled up and you can put just a little extra glue at the bottom just to make sure it doesn't get unraveled. There's my Sherbonder Cool Shot. And then you're gonna lay it down and you're gonna start spreading out the petals, okay? So that it's gonna look like this. So we're gonna just start from the outside and start pressing them down until you get to the center. And I think these are so cool. Now, if you don't want it to look quite so full, don't use as long of a piece. Use a shorter length of the ribbon, but I love these. You could either press them down this way and um, have that be the top, but we're gonna put the button here and make that other 
hard surface be the bottom, and that's how we're gonna attach it to our hoop. So I'm gonna make three of these that are the white color and three of these that are the brown, and we're gonna add them now around our hoop using a combination of hot glue and E6000. And here's our finished project. I had forgotten about these burlap pulled string flowers and I'm excited to make some more this spring. For DIY number 10, we're gonna make this palette square wall decor using four of these flat wood palettes from Dollar Tree, some greenery, and these wood word stickers from Hobby Lobby. Now you're gonna use four of these. Uh, you'll find them unfinished. I had painted these for a different project, so I'm gonna repaint them with white Waverly chalk paint, and then I'm just going to distress the edges a little bit with my little sander. I kind of liked how when I sanded them, the black was coming through from how I painted them before. So if you want that look, you could paint yours black first and then paint them white. I'm gonna use wood glue to glue them together now in a square like you see them here. Just putting a little bit of wood glue on the end of the next piece that I am gluing on until we get all four of them glued together with a small little square in the middle. Next, I'm gonna make a little wreath for the center and I'm using a mini grapevine wreath that I had on hand. And I'm just taking little pieces of a boxwood branch from Walmart and gluing them on one at a time, kind of overlapping them on top of each other till I get it completely filled in. Then I'm gonna put a bunch of hot glue on the back and glue that right in the center where that square hole is. Just putting it right in the middle of our palette square. Then I decided to use the word blessed from these Woodward stickers from Hobby Lobby. I'm just coloring it black with a Sharpie marker and attaching it to this tag also from Hobby Lobby that I tied around the wreath. And I'm just gonna tack it down so it stays at this angle down here in the bottom corner. Then taking this, I believe it's 5 8 inch black and white gingham ribbon, I'm just gonna tie a simple bow and leave the tails a little bit longer than usual and glue this to the upper left corner of our wreath. And that's our finished project. I love how this turned out. You could use a larger wreath if you wanted, but I really like this small one. For DIY number 11, we're gonna make some really cute and simple book page hoop decor. I'm gonna use a couple of embroidery hoops that I purchased from Walmart, some pages from a book that I purchased at Dollar Tree. So I'm just setting the hoop on top of the book page and tracing around the outside of my hoop. We're going to cut out the circle from the book page and then glue the hoop onto the book page.
Next, taking one little branch of greenery from some faux eucalyptus, I'm gonna glue that right there at the top of the hoop, right on top of the wood, and then we're gonna cover up the end of the greenery where we glued it with a little bow. So like I said, we're gonna take some ribbon and just make two really simple bows, trimming those tails, and then we're gonna glue them onto the hoop right where that greenery end is. And lastly, we're just gonna add some jute twine around the screw through that hole there and tie them off with a knot so you can hang these up. You could also paint your wood hoops if you'd like, but I liked mine the natural color. For DIY number 12, we're gonna give a makeover to a Dollar Tree barn shape. This was in the stores around Valentine's time. We're gonna use some scrapbook paper, this wood circle, a stencil, and some greenery. So I loved this spring floral paper that was in my stash. I'm gonna use my fingernail there to trace around and know where to cut so that it'll fit on top of our barn shape. And then once I have that cut out, I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over the front here of our barn and we're going to Mod Podge this scrapbook paper down right over that image that was already on the barn. Next, taking this wood circle, I'm gonna paint it with Waverly Agave. I thought this color matched some of the florals in the scrapbook paper really nicely. And we're gonna paint this on the front and also on the side edges and set that aside to dry. Coming back to our barn, we're gonna trim off any excess scrapbook paper with our little Fiskars fingertip knife. Then we'll also come back in with our sander just to clean up the edges even more. Now that the paint on our circle is dry, I'm gonna take this Magnolia stencil and we're just gonna use the words Home Sweet Home that are in the middle. And I'm gonna stencil these on the blue circle with this peach colored chalk paste called Peachy Keen. And we're just gonna get that on just the words, being careful not to get it on any of the leaves. And here's our beautiful words on our circle. We're gonna attach this to the front of our barn, but first we're gonna take some jute twine just to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse touch. And we're gonna carefully glue that around the circle right there at the edge, trimming off when we get to the end of the circle. Then we'll put some hot glue all over the back of that circle and glue that right down to the center of our barn. I noticed there was a little bit of a gap there at the bottom where my paper didn't quite cover. So I decided to take a piece of this pink ribbon, the same ribbon that I made a bow for the top. And I'm gonna glue this at the top of the barn while also gluing that flat piece all the way around the front and the sides. And as a last touch, I'm gonna to use a little bit more of that boxwood greenery from Walmart, and I'm just gonna tuck one little piece behind either side of our bow. And here's our finished project. I love this because it shows you that you can take items put out at Dollar Tree for one holiday and use them for something else. DIY 13, we're gonna make a Hello Spring round sign using this large wood round sign from Hobby Lobby as well as these tall skinny wood letters and a couple of stencils from Magnolia as well as some ribbon. Now this round is 14 inches in diameter so I am going to tape off half of it 
at the seven inch mark and I'm gonna paint the top half with my white Waverly chalk paint. While that's drying, I have my wood letters that spell the word spring down on a piece of painter's tape so they cannot move around while I'm painting them. I'm gonna use ballet slipper for half of the letters and maize yellow for the other half. Coming back to my round where my white paint is now dry, I'm gonna take a clean piece of painter's tape and paint uh, tape it down right on the edge of the white there. And now I'm gonna paint the bottom half of my round with agave. Once the agave is dry, I am going to brush a layer of Mod Podge over the entire round since I am going to be stenciling. You could also spray it with a clear matte spray. Next, coming in with one of my favorite pattern stencils from Magnolia. This is butterfly pattern. We're gonna line this up right on that line between the white and agave paint. And we're gonna stencil this image with raspberry chalk paste. I love how this bright pink just pops off of that blue. And you can see there's a little piece there on the right. I'm gonna have to move my stencil over and complete the pattern, but it is a repeating pattern. So that will be no problem lining it up to finish it out on this bottom half of our round. Next, I'm gonna use this Hello stencil. This is from our spring and summer porch sitter add-ons. And I'm gonna use Pansy to stencil this over here on the left side of the top of our round, leaving some space on the right for a messy bow. First though, we're gonna take some hot glue and we're gonna glue down our letters to spell spring. Again, these wood letters are from Hobby Lobby and you get two in a pack for I believe like $1.29. Next, I'm gonna make a stacked messy bow using a bunch of different spring ribbons from my stash, from Hobby Lobby, from Dollar Tree, and you just need two of each type of ribbon and we're gonna stack them crisscross like this. We will dovetail them, and then we're gonna tie the whole thing together before we attach it to our round. So to give each ribbon that dovetailed end, we're gonna line up the edges, fold it in half, and cut diagonally from the fold to the outer edge. We're gonna do this to all of our pairs of ribbons, and we're gonna start with these being the longest, and then as we go forward on the bow, we'll make them a little bit shorter so that you'll be able to see all the different ribbons when this bow is tied together. So we're gonna tie this together at the center. You can see I've flipped it over to the back now, and I'm gonna kind of scrunch the ribbons all together as I pull the twine tight. And then once I have that first pull, I'm gonna turn it over, make sure it's all in the center, and then finish off the knot 
before cutting off the excess. Then you can take your time and fluff out all your ribbons so that it's as big as you want it to be. Now instead of trying to glue the bow onto the round, I'm gluing a pair of magnets where I'm gonna want my bow to go. And then I'm gonna glue my bow to the top magnet. This is just a nice way to also be able to attach a bow, especially if you have a sign where you want to be able to change out the bow. You can put a magnet on the back and it makes it really, really easy. Here is our finished round sign. You can see I added a length of ribbon right where the white and agave paint touches. And I love this. For a complete list of all the supplies I've used in today's projects, open up the description box below the title of this video. You usually need to tap the word more, and that will show you a list for each project of the tools and supplies that I've used. You'll also find the link to my link tree, which will give you all the links to my Amazon storefront, my Magnolia website, and other items that I am an affiliate for. For DIY 14, I'm gonna show you how you can make a really simple book stack for any season. I'm using three paperbacks from Dollar Tree, some scrapbook paper from my stash, and this, these uh, rolling pin words from Magnolia. Now I'm just measuring the length of my book and how long of a piece I will need to go all the way around my book, and it's about 12 inches. And so I'm gonna choose three different coordinating scrapbook papers from this pad here. I believe it's from Hobby Lobby, yep. And I'm gonna cut them at seven, no, six and three quarters inches. That's how tall my book is. And then we're gonna leave the length at 12 inches. Now I'm gonna show scoring this paper on a scoreboard, but that is not a necessary uh, tool to do this project. You can simply fold the paper around the book but I'm going to score one inch out of the center. That is where the spine of the book is going to be. And then I'm going to fold on those two lines, tuck my book inside, and then see how much gap is on either end that I need to fold over inside. So you can see right there, it's about one and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and score again one and a quarter inches from the end of my paper. And when we fold those, they're gonna kind of make like a book, what do you call it? A book jacket for each of the books. I'm not going to attach this paper to the books. I wanna make this very easy to change out for different seasons. So here you can see I just kind of wrapped my book you could put a little bit of tape if you wanted to, to secure the paper down, but I really don't think that's necessary. So go ahead and wrap all three of your books. Once I have all three of my books stacked up, I am going to take a little piece of jute twine and I'm gonna wrap it around my books on the left side. I'm gonna tie a knot and then wrap it a few times and then tie the knot again. Next, I'm gonna take these words from these rolling pin words from Magnolia, and I'm going to stencil blessed home and family on my book stack. To finish off our book stack, I'm gonna tuck some greenery in there and then make a really simple 
uh, bow with the jute twine by wrapping it around my fingers and then tying it in the center. And then we're just gonna hot glue that to the top of the twine that's already there. And that's how simple it is. You can change this out with different papers and different words for all your different seasons and holidays and just keep using the same three paperback books. DIY 15 is a birdhouse welcome sign. I'm using this long shelf from Dollar Tree as well as this wood welcome sign and three different wood birdhouses as well as some moss and some greenery. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the rope off of this hanging shelf. We're gonna use this shelf as the base for our sign. So I'm going to first darken this up using antique wax, using the baby wipe method. Then for my bird houses, I'm going to use plaster for all three of the bird houses, the body of the bird house, as well as the base. Coming to the welcome sign, I'm gonna use that same plaster for the letters. Then we're gonna come back in with some other colors for the decorative elements on that sign. I'm gonna use truffle brown chalk paint for the roofs and the base for each birdhouse, as well as the little peg that the little bird can sit on out front. And we're also gonna use truffle on the pot here, as well as the handle of the little pitchfork gardening tool. Next, we'll use some fern for the plant and some maize yellow for the rain boots. We'll come back in with a silver paint marker to finish off the gardening tool. Next, I added some little screw eyes to the tops of each of my birdhouses. I kind of sanded the peak a little bit to try to make it flat and holding it with pliers, I tried to hammer it in a little bit with a hammer and then turn it. I'm also going to attach three larger ones to the base or the bottom of this hanging shelf sign and probably these were the hardest part of this project, just getting these into the MDF or the wood and lined up, but it was worth it. I really like how it turns out in the end. I'm gonna use some of the rope and the metal hanger that came with this shelf, and I'm gonna retie it in the top two holes, making knots in the front, and then making sure it's even length on either side. Next, we're gonna glue the welcome that we've painted and has dried right onto that hanging shelf. I just love this. I feel like the, the brown from the antique wax behind just makes the whole sign pop. I did decide I wanted to add a little bit more of the rope back onto the sign. I'm gonna wrap it on either end a couple times to cover up that bottom hole. Next, I'm gonna decorate the front of each of my three different birdhouses with a little bit of greenery, some of these little white flowers, as well as a little bit of moss. Then using some thin jute twine, I'm gonna loop it through the 
eye screw eye there on the sign and also through the one on top of the birdhouse and I'm going to tie these off at different lengths. And this sign definitely took some time to make, but I absolutely love the outcome, how these three birdhouses are so cute and hanging from this sign. For DIY 16, we're also gonna use some birdhouses and make these pretty pedestal birdhouses out of three glass candlesticks and two of these larger wooden birdhouses from Dollar Tree. So just like with the salt shakers, I'm gonna first apply a layer of Mod Podge to the glass candle holders and let that dry completely so that when we go to paint them, it will hold on to the paint a little bit better. Once that's dry then, we're going to paint them with plaster. It's the off-white Waverly chalk paint. Next, I chose two pretty floral papers from my scrapbook paper stash. And after measuring the sides of the birdhouse, I'm just trimming the papers now so that they'll fit the two shorter sides, as well as a larger piece that will fit the side, the front and back of the birdhouse that has the point on the top. And what I did is I just used my fingernail to trim out where it would need to be cut and then used that piece as a template to cut all of my other pieces. So I am going to cover all four sides of each of the birdhouses with scrapbook paper. Before I attach the paper though, I'm gonna paint the bases and the roofs of each of the houses with that same plaster Waverly chalk paint. Then once the paint is dry, I'm gonna use Mod Podge on each side of the house and attach down the scrap of paper pieces that I've cut out. I removed the rope hangers from the top of the birdhouses and then cutting another small piece of scrapbook paper. We're gonna glue that right on the peak of the birdhouse. It matches the papers that are already on each of the birdhouses and I think covers up that hole really nicely. Taking two of the glass candlesticks, I'm gonna use a combination of E6000 and hot glue to glue two of them together on the tops. So the skinnier part of the candlesticks, I'm gonna glue those together and then wrap a little bit of twine. Taking the other one, that's a single one, I'm gonna line it up on the bottom of the birdhouse, kind of mark out where the glue needs to go so I can use some hot glue to attach that onto the base of our birdhouse. So one of our birdhouses is gonna be one candlestick tall, the other one is going to be two candlesticks tall.
And now we'll glue down the other birdhouse onto the two candlesticks. I love how these turned out. They're so pretty either by themselves or together as a set. DIY 17 are these crushed can flower pockets using two recycled cans, some napkins, some Mod Podge, and then greenery and some of this jute twine wrapped wire. Now for making these, you have to also remove the bottom from the can so that it's just a tube and you're gonna kind of bend it in half, squishing it at the bottom doing as much of it as you can with your hands and then you're going to see I'm going to hammer the bottom together with a hammer here in just a second to get it nice and flat and then flip it over and make sure you do it on both sides. So I'm going to use a couple of napkins. This blue one is from Dollar Tree. I want to go ahead and paint a real light coat of blue paint on my can front and back just to kind of match the color of the napkin. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one with a pink cloud. Then putting some Mod Podge on, I'm gonna Mod Podge just the top layer of the napkin. So make sure you remove any other layers of the napkin. We're gonna press that down gently onto the Mod Podge here in just a second, pressing it very gently. We don't want to rip a hole in the napkin. It is very fragile at this point, being only one layer thick. Just press it gently. You can even grab some plastic wrap or um, something similar to help you kind of put a layer between the napkin and your hands. And we'll do the same thing to the second can and let those dry completely. Once the Mod Podge is dry, we're gonna use our little sander to clean up the edges, any excess of the napkin that is hanging off. Then I'm gonna use my Crocodile Big Bite to punch two holes in the sides of the can. This is where we're going to attach our jute twine wire to be a little handle or hanger for our cans. And the last step then is to add whatever florals or greenery you'd like to these pockets. I think these are really fun to make, would make a great craft project with some girlfriends using a bunch of different napkins and whatever florals people wanted to bring. For DIY 18, we're going to make something else with recycled cans. These are from canned chicken. We're going to use some clothespins, some moss, and some floral foam from Dollar Tree, as well as some of their faux succulents. So I clipped these around just to see how many I would need, and I need about 31 halves of the clothespins. So I'm going to take these apart and take off the metal spring. And then I'm going to make a mixture with just some watered down brown paint 
to stain these clothespin halves. So I needed 31 about, so I think I did about 16 clothespins worth to give me 32 halves just in case. So I'm just gonna brush this on and I'm gonna let that dry. Coming to my cans, I'm gonna take some floral foam and just find really creative ways here to fit that foam inside my can using this little knife to trim off any excess pieces. Now you're gonna see me trim the part that's sticking up a little bit and then I realized I don't really need to do that because that part's gonna be hidden anyway. So you can ignore what I'm gonna do here by cutting off that top little layer that is sticking up past the can. So here I'm gonna glue these clothespin halves all the way around my can. Then once I have them all lined up, I'm gonna put some glue there on the foam, attach a little uh, floral moss in there, and then just fill it up with some faux succulents from Dollar Tree. You can get them on Amazon. You can um, design them however you'd like. You could add in other florals if you would like as well. The last thing I'm going to do is take this green jute and I'm just going to go around with some hot glue and I'm going to lay this jute twine in that little um, space that's on all of the clothespins. That's actually how I got them lined up by lining up that space on all of the clothespins. And I just love this little succulent barrel. I think it's really cute. It would make a nice little gift for someone for their desk. DIY 19 is another little birdhouse project. I'm using three birdhouses, three wood crates, and some wood dowels, as well as some paint and this stencil from Magnolia. The first thing I'm going to do with these three crates is I'm going to give them a coat of Waverly chalk paint in the color white, all three of them. Then I'm going to paint my birdhouses, at least the body part of the birdhouses, one with ballet slipper, one with pool and the other one with white. Next, I'm gonna paint the roofs and the bases of my houses. I'm gonna paint one roof blue and the rest I'm going to paint white. Now I'm using these dowels that are six inches and I'm going to glue one of them together with half of another one to make nine inches. And then I'm gonna glue two of the six inches together to make 12 and then use one that is six inches. I'm putting these together with wood glue so they'll be nice and strong. So here's our 12 inch piece. Then we have our nine and our six, and I'm gonna paint all of these with my black Waverly chalk paint. Next, I'm gonna wood glue our three crates together and hold them together with these clamps until they're nice and dry and secure. I'm 
I'm gonna use this stencil again from Magnolia that says home sweet home. I'm gonna put one word on each of my bird houses. So on the pink one, I'm gonna do home. On the blue though, I'm just gonna use the W-E-E-T from sweet to make wheat. And then later I'm gonna come back and put the T at the beginning of the word. So our bird houses will say home tweet home. Using some super glue gel, I am gonna glue our three dowels to the bottoms of our birdhouses. Then put some floral foam in the bottom of each crate to give it some stability. Then I'm gonna take our dowels with our birdhouses on the top and poke them into the floral foam. Then we're gonna add some pieces of boxwood greenery to fill in the base around the floral foam. Our last DIY for this video is a simple wood tray lantern using two of these wood trays from Dollar Tree as well as some tumbling tower blocks. Now, if you don't have tumbling tower blocks, you could easily get some dowels from Walmart or Hobby Lobby and cut those. I decided to make my lantern seven blocks tall. So I'm gluing seven of these tumbling tower blocks together end to end, and we're gonna line them up against this ruler and then I'm going to add another layer on top so that my stick here, I'll just call it my stick, is going to be more square than rectangular. So I'm gonna use 14 blocks for each corner of my lantern. So 14 times four is how many blocks you're gonna need, unless you wanna make your lantern taller or shorter. That is completely up to you. But I'm doing two layers of the blocks for each corner. And once those are dry, I'm going to paint them with black Waverly chalk paint. And for this neutral farmhouse look, I've decided to use antique wax for the two trays. I'm going to do every single surface of the tray with the antique wax inside and out. Once everything is painted and dry, I'm gonna start with my bottom tray and I'm going to glue one tumbling tower block stick in each corner with wood glue, holding it there until that wood glue grabs on. You're gonna do that to all four of the corners of your tray and just make sure you give it sufficient time to dry completely. For the inside of my lantern, I'm simply going to use one of these white pillar candles from Dollar Tree and I'm going to wrap it with a piece of ribbon from Hobby Lobby.
And here's the finished look. I did not glue the top tray on. I just kind of set it on like a hat and added some greenery around the candle. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you next time. Take care.